Hi, welcome back to the Robotics University course. Till now we have studied about two main parts of a manipulator, that is links and joints. In this lecture, we will be studying about two other main parts of a manipulator, that is wrist and end effectors. Apart from this, we will study another important topic, that is robot programming. So let's start with wrist. Arm is the first section of the manipulator and wrist is the second section of the manipulator. Wrist is attached at the end of the arm. Wrist is used to orient the end effector in 3D space. For orientation in any way in 3D space, the wrist requires 3 degrees of freedom. That gives 3 rotations about 3 principal axes, the x axis, y axis and z axis. But Depending upon the application as how we want to orient the end effector, the degree of freedom can be less than 3. Okay, depending upon the application. Suppose there is an application where only 2 degrees of freedom are required. So, the mechanical design of the wrist will be according to the 2 degrees of freedom. Okay, moving further. The 3 rotations of the wrist are known as roll, pitch and yaw. Roll is the motion in a plane perpendicular to arm end. As shown in the diagram, you can see that roll is the rotation about the horizontal axis in this way. Similarly, pitch is the motion in the vertical plane passing through the arm. That is, pitch is the rotation about the another horizontal axis as shown in the diagram. The third motion is yaw. Yaw is the motion in the horizontal plane passing through the arm. That is, yaw is the motion, the rotation about this vertical axis. A wrist with high dexterity is the one where three axes intersect at a point. If the three axes intersect, such wrist will have high dexterity. Okay. In robotics, we have seen that as the dexterity is increased, the complication in mechanical design also increases. So, in wrist also, if three axes intersect, the mechanical design will become complicated. Moving further, the last part in the study of manipulator is end effector. These are attached at the end of the wrist and are used to perform a specific task. Okay. One important point to be noted over here is that the end effector are external to the arm. These do not add to any positioning, orienting or manipulating. So, the degree of freedom of the end effector are not combined with the degree of freedom of the manipulator. In the previous lectures, we have studied the 3 degrees of freedom or 6 degrees of freedom of a manipulator. But here, the degrees of freedom of the end effector is not added in those degrees of freedom. The end effector is external to the arm. So, the degrees of freedom of the end effector are not combined with the degree of freedom of the manipulator. These end effectors are of two types. First one is grippers. Grippers are used to grasp or hold the workpiece or tools. Okay. And the second type of the end effector is the tool itself that can be used to perform various tasks like welding, drilling, grinding, etc. So, we have completed the study of basic structure of the manipulator. Now, we will study about robot programming. Robots are required to do some work cycle. But, robots have no intelligence of their own. They need to be taught as how, when, where and in what sequence to do a particular task. The teaching of the work cycle to a robot is known as robot programming. Now, robots can be programmed in two different ways. Number one, teach by showing or lead through programming. Number two, textual commands with a suitable interface. So, the first one, teach by showing or lead through programming. In this method, the manipulator is made to move through the desired motion path of the entire work cycle and the path and the other parameters are saved in the memory. As we move the arm through the desired motion, the 
path and the other parameters are getting saved into the memory okay and in the second thing that is textual commands a robot programming language so as an interface between the user and the robot manipulator a programmer uses a robot programming language and writes a code according to the required or desired task to be done by the manipulator this textual programming can be done in two ways online or offline in online programming the manipulator executes the command as soon as it is entered in this type of pro programming there is a loss of production as when the programmer is writing the program uh, the manipulator is engaged for that time it is not involved in any type of production process in this type of programming any discrepancies or bugs that happen is rectified at the same time of programming after this program is completed it is saved and the robot executes in run mode relentlessly okay and in the second thing that is offline programming the programmer develops the program test it in a simulated graphical environment without access to the manipulator in this type of programming the manipulator is not engaged the manipulator is doing the production process while the programmer is writing the program he is testing it in a simulated graphical environment so there is no loss of production in offline programming in offline programming after the program is completed it is again saved and the robot executes in run mode relentlessly so that was all for this lecture see you in the next lecture